Sister Anna Margarita Lanzas. She's travelled all the way from Miami, Florida, um, with Mother Adela Galindo, who will be speaking at 1 p.m. in the Basilica, to be here today for the All Ireland Rosary Rally. So we're so delighted to have you, Sister Anna. She's got the gift of great joy, and she's going to be speaking on um, devotion to the first five Saturdays, why they're important to do them, and what can make it easier for us to uh, fulfill the devotion that Our Lady asked for. Thank you, Sister Anna. Good morning. And I thank um, the two fathers who, who were so inspiring for us, right? Preparing for this moment to speak about the devotion of the first Saturdays. But before we enter into the topic, let us first give thanks to God for this beautiful weather. I tell you, this is my second time in Ireland. My first time, and I'll see some faces that I recognized when we first came on September last year. Um, it was a very rainy time. Morning rained, stop. Afternoon rain, little stop. Up, little, later evening rained, evening rain. At all times it was raining. So as we were driving from the airport, was taking pictures, sending it to our mission team. We were like 35 of us, and we went to different dioceses with the uh, relic of Jean John Paul II. And I was saying, can you believe this is Ireland? Because for them, it was their first time too, you know, to come, and it was so rainy. And now that we see the sunshine, I said, you know what? I know what it is. We are dedicating the whole Saturday all these people who are coming from all over the island, Ireland, to knock, to dedicate ourselves, to listen about Our Lady, to pray with her, to pray through her, and ask her intercession for us and for the whole world. And she is the woman who is clothed with the sun. So she gave us the sun for today and for tomorrow, I believe. And so let us give an applause to the Son of Mary, who has given us the Son for us to delight ourselves today with. So we thank God for, because in nature, he also let us know that he's with us. He always, he always sends us signs, signs and wonders in which he allows us to see that he is with us. Little things, they don't have to be big, big things. We are so accustomed nowadays that everything big is what it is. And no, things are in little details. And in little details, things become big. You take a little piece of rock, put it today, another one brings another piece of rock, they put it today, and then another one, another one, and then all of a sudden you can make a mountain out of the little piece of rock that everybody is bringing for a purpose. So that's life. Little details. We have to contemplate God in the little details of our lives. The first detail of this day was that you and I could open our eyes and say, good morning. We are alive. We have a day for God. We have a day to dedicate to our Blessed Mother. So, let me get into the topic. We're going to speak today, in this last talk of the morning, about the devotion of First Saturdays. Then we're going to go into another detail on that devotion. Going in a little bit of history, we have to remember that classically and for many, 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 many years, Saturdays have been set apart, dash, consecrated for our Blessed Mother. It is nothing new. This is something that comes from the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. And why? Because our Lord died on a Friday. And what happened on a Saturday? Our Blessed Mother was sad. 
She knew, because her son had said that he will resurrect. But nevertheless, she had to walk with her son all the way through Calvary and suffer with him, alongside with him, and stood at the foot of the cross as he was given his life for you and me, for our redemption. So our Blessed Mother suffered a lot that Friday, a lot. And then when he was, she had to go away, she left with a lot of suffering. Many of us have lost loved ones, right? You can raise your hands. We have, lo we have lost many loved ones, right? And we have suffered. And with the passing of time, we become a little more at peace of, of that, about that suffering. But nevertheless, that moment was horrible. We thought we would die with them. We thought we would go in the casket with them because we were in such a pain. Well, that happened to our Blessed Mother. And that is why in the church, from the very beginning of the foundation of the church, Saturdays are dedicated to our Blessed Mother, to accompany her, to be with her, to tell her how much we love her, and that we appreciate who she is. Because through her, yes, we had salvation. God the Father chose her to be the mother of God, and she chose to say yes to God the Father to the invitation of the angel, so you and I can have redemption. You and I can have a place in heaven. You and I can return to God. So the relationship between Mary, the heart of Mary, and the heart of Jesus is inseparable. You cannot separate Mary from Jesus, nor Jesus from Mary. That is a no-no. They were always together, so much so, that now in heaven, those are the only two bodies that we know that are in heaven, because she was assumed into heaven. That's one of our dogmas of faith about Blessed Mary. So, as I say, you know, Saturday traditionally has been dedicated to Our Lady, and in the year 1905, Pope St. Pius X, he promulgated a decree in which he praised that practice. And he praised it and gave a gift to us, to the church. He gave us the gift of having indulgences on that, on that day. Do you know what the indulgences are? Indulgence is not indulgence, eating something sweet, so you indulge yourself and you make yourself uh, happy because you're giving something good that you want to eat, a chocolate, that maybe you're a diabetic and you cannot eat chocolate, so you get a little piece and sneak around and have it, so your daughter or your, or your son doesn't see you that you're having that chocolate. Well, that's not the type of indulgence that the church gives us. The church gives us a great gift of indulgence. And I want to take the time to talk about indulgence before we continue on First Saturdays. Why? Because we are in the year 2024, right? And next year is 2025. It's a holy year. We're going to have holy doors opening everywhere in, at every diocese in the world. The first one is going to be, I believe, San Giovanni Laterano in, in Rome and in the Vatican and all the papal uh, basilicas will have a holy door and we're going to enter to those doors as we enter into the heart of Jesus and we receive many graces as we do that devotion. Now, how many of you have at your house, not here, because I, I believe, I am sure that you don't have it here. Sometimes it's too heavy to carry. How many of you have the catechism of the Catholic Church that was promulgated by John, St. John Paul II on October 11, 1992, 30 years after the opening of the Second Vatican Council? How many of you have it at home? Great. 
how many of you open it and read it? Some of us, right? And that's what happened with books. We have a big library and we don't use them. Oh, we go to this, like right now there is a book of Father Willie right there. So you're gonna buy it, you're gonna kind of look at it around and then you take it home and it just goes in the shelf. You don't read it any longer. No, we need to form ourselves. We cannot go around just listening to good talks every once in a while when you go to a retreat or watching the TV program or a movie on the saints. All of those things are great. But we need to be people who form ourselves. We need to be formed in order to respond to God and to every invitation he gives us because we know the truth. So we need to be people of the truth, people that are formed well, and we have the tools and the means to do so. One of them is the great gift that St. John Paul II gave us, the Catholic catechism of the, of the church. Now, going into the catechism, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote and then we're, I'm gonna explain, because sometimes we need to code things and read it as is, and then we explain it and we understand better. So, on the indulgences, in the, in the, in the catechism, number 174, 170, uh, 1470, 174, 174, 1472, 1473, and 1471. That's why you're gonna go look for before the year 2025. So you've got a couple of months to go and get your catechism if you don't have it, and or look for it, for whatever you have it at home, because you don't read it that often. So what does the catechism says about the indulgence? It says, an indulgence, and I quote, is a remission before God of the temporal punishment due to sins whose guilt has already been forgiven, which the faithful Christian who is duly disposed gains under certain prescribed conditions through the action of the church, which, as a minister of redemption, dispenses and applies with authority the treasury of the satisfaction of Christ and the saints. A lot of words I'm gonna give you in a very short version what indulgences are. When we sin, we sin against God and we sin against others, against ourselves. And then we go to confession God is so good that we have the sacrament of confession and the priest forgives our sins. Sins are forgiven, so we are forgiven by God. Nevertheless, there's still some penance that we have to bear and sufferings in life that we have to bear in reparation for that sin that has been forgiven. We, our sins are forgiven, but yet there's some things that happen in life and sometimes we ask ourselves, why me, Lord? Why do I have to suffer in this case? Why this sickness? Why my, my, my daughter, is the way she is, or my son is the way she is, or my, even my mother or my father. And that brings us a, little, a suffering to our souls. And those sufferings are means of purification of ourselves. Because our sins are being forgiven, but yet we need still to purify ourselves. So when the church gives us the indulgences, that gift is to take away on everything or on a partial way those sufferings that we endure in life due to the sin that we have committed. Again, our sins are forgiven, but we still have to cleanse ourselves. We still have to purify ourselves. And that is why we have the dogma of purgatory. Remember that we say that when we die, 
we either go to, to purgatory, heaven, and unfortunately, some to hell. I am hoping that I am talking to a crowd that we will meet either at purgatory or in heaven because we have chosen God. The only way you go to hell is when you deliberately reject God and his grace and the kingdom he has given you. So here, I believe that all of us will be together in heaven one day. But in order to get to heaven, we need to be purified. And that's why we go through what is called the state of purgatory. And that's why we pray. Remember, we also, that's another one. We, many people have lost the sense of praying for the holy souls in purgatory. We need to pray for them because they can do nothing for themselves. They are only there waiting to be purified enough in order to get to heaven. So when we receive an, an indulgence, when we are, as he says here, with, is the action of the, the church to, to those who are duly disposed and gains on the certain prescribed conditions. What are the conditions? To pray for the Holy Father, a, a creed, our Father, a Hail Mary, to go to confession, and to receive Holy Communion. Those are the, prescription, the prescribed directions to receive the indulgence. Now, the indulgence could be, as I said, partial or plenary. When it's partial, it's some of those, some, some of those uh, uh, punishments are removed. When it's plenary, is the whole thing is removed. What does that mean? That means that when I pray and with conscious, I do what is being prescribed to receive the indulgence that the church gives us, if that I die that day, I go straight to heaven because the church has taken away all those little things that still are there for me to, to purify in purgatory. I don't go to purgatory. When I receive a plenary indulgence and I die with it, I just received, have received in it, that day I can go to heaven. And what do I say that day? Because you and I know that we are at mass, we are very pious, we receive the Lord, we're praying, and then we go, we get our car, somebody else cut off, and here we are yelling and saying all these things to these people that are cutting off in the car, and there goes all the graces we received. So that's why we need the purification. We're not in mortal sin, but we're always, because of our frailty, always in the situation that we need to purify ourselves. And that is why I invite you that when the Lord allows you to have in your lives some sufferings, don't see it as a punishment. See it as a grace of God that he's given you to cleanse yourself, to purify yourself, and to offer to the Lord that little sacrifice. So I'm going to move forward. So Pius X saw that that practice of dedicating the first Saturdays to Our Lady was so good that he granted indulgences to those who dedicate the first Saturday to Our Lady. So today, you are capable of receiving that in indulgence, and it's a plenary indulgence that what the Pope Pius X gave to those who dedicate the first Saturday of the month to Our Lady. They consecrate that day to her, meaning they set apart the day to, to pray to her, to do good things to others, offering it to, the, to Our Lady, to, to pray the rosary and so forth. I'm gonna get into more details further. So, this same year, in the 1905, in the month of November, Pius X also granted indulgences to the sons and daughters of the Heart of Mary and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, who traditionally dedicate themselves for each first Saturday repairing to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. 
That is the church, 1905. What happened in 1917, 12 years later? Well, in 1917, our Blessed Mother appeared to the three children in Fatima. Now, Saint Jacinta, Saint Francisco Marto, and Sister Lucia. Venerable Lucia the Santo. See how the church anticipates everything and how Our Lady, when she came to visit the children in 1917, have been already paved the way by the church in 1905 by St. Pius X, in which he praised the first Saturday devotion. Now we're going to enter into Fatima, and we're going to enter into the five first Saturday, because up until then, it was first Saturday devotion. Fatima... Our Lady and Jesus himself explain how and why this devotion is so important. So on, on the uh, apparition of July the 13th, 1917, our Blessed Mother promised Sister Lucia that in the future, a, manifest, a manifestation will occur in which she will reveal the devotion of the first Saturdays. The Blessed Mother said to Lucia, to prevent the war, I will come to ask for the consecration, the talk that you just heard, for the consecration to Russia, to my Immaculate Heart, and communion of reparation on the first Saturdays of the month. This promise, that was July 13, 1917, and this promise was fulfilled on December 10th, 1925. And how was it? Sister Lucia was a postulant in the convent of San Dorothy in Pontevedra, Spain when she had an apparition of the Blessed Mother at the chapel. Our Blessed Mother was standing over a cloud of light with the child Jesus to her side. She wasn't carrying the child, he was a little older and he was standing right to the right side of our Blessed Mother. And the Blessed Virgin Mary placed her hand on the shoulder of Sister Lucia. And while her other hand was sustaining her immaculate heart, which was surrounded by thorns. So her right, left hand on Lucia, her right hand on her heart, surrounded by thorns. And the child Jesus said to Sister Lucia, have compassion on the heart of your, of your blessed mother, it is surrounded with, with thorns that ungrateful men pierce each moment, and there is no one that is willing to offer an act of reparation to take the thorns away. Listen to that. Child Jesus to Sister Lucia. Have compassion on the heart of your blessed mother. Have compassion. It is surrounded with thorns that ungrateful men or women pierce each moment. And there's no one that is willing to offer an act of reparation to take the thorns away. How sad. There's no one is willing to offer reparation to take the thorns away. Our Lady immediately said to Sister Lucia, Look, my daughter, my heart is surrounded with thorns that ungrateful men and women pierce on nests unceasingly with their blasphemies and ingratitude. Those are the two actions. Blasphemy, how many times we say things that we shouldn't say. 
and in gratitude. How many times we stop to give thanks to God and to Our Lady. As I say, you know, when you open your eyes every morning, at least I do, thank you, Jesus, I have a day, one more day, because we don't know if we have tomorrow. Today, I have today. And what am I going to do today? So for the very moment of I, when I open my eyes, I do the sign of the cross, because I want to start my day, consecrate myself to the Blessed Trinity, to the Holy Trinity, and also questioning myself, what am I going to do today to do good for others so I can console the heart of our Blessed Mother? So blasphemies and ingratitude. You, at least, says Our Lady to Lucia, try to console me and announce that for all those, and this is it, this is the moment, and announce that for all those who for five consecutive first Saturdays confess, receive Holy Communion, pray the Holy Rosary accompanying me, accompanying me for 15, not an hour, not 30, 15 minutes by meditating the mysteries of the Holy Rosary with the intention to do reparation. And here's the promise. I promise to assist them at the hour of death with the graces needed for salvation. So what is it where Our Lady has asked to Sister Lucia? She asked to invite us to pray five consecutive first Saturdays by going to confession, praying the rosary, meditating on the mysteries for 15 minutes. What does that mean? What she meant was, don't go like Hail Mary for the very brother. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, no. Hail Mary, full of grace, and meditate on what you're praying. John Paul II did also great for us in Rosario Virgin Corona, which I'm not going to get into it because Mother is going to speak about the rosary. He taught us how to pray the rosary better, and he even gave us a new decade of the rosary, the, the, the missions of, of Jesus. So and receive Holy Communion, and then with the promise of assistance at the hour of death for the graces that we must need for our salvation. So the three elements, confession, it is essential in our journey of faith. Brothers and sisters, we need to go to confession. If you have not yet gone for a long time, today is your day. There, I asked before the talk, are we, do we have priests, enough priests for all these people who are going to go to confession today? And they say yes. So we're going to go to confession. We need to go back to confession. Don't be afraid. It is a gift of God for you. Your soul will be liberated. You will be free. You will be able to jump and shout and with joy before God because you are free the Lord is going to set you free through the sacrament of confession. The Eucharist, we will have Mass at the end of the day with the bishop, and we will be able to receive Holy <laughs> Eucharist today. So confession, Eucharist, praying of the rosary, we will have a procession, we will pray the rosary together, a beautiful rosary offered to the Our Lady today. And also the promises of receiving the graces needed for salvation. When, before Our Lady appeared to the children, the heaven prepared the children with a visit of the angel of Fatima, the, sorry, the angel of Portugal. And that visit of the angel was three times. And the visit of the angel was towards the pre pre preparation of the children to receive Our Lady, but also to teach them about how to do reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. At the first apparition, 
the angel of Portugal taught, taught them the uh, prayer that we all pray after the rosary. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all, not some, not few, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. So in that prayer after each decade, we are being missionaries of Our Lady, praying for those who might not remember that God exists, praying for those who are still in mortal sin, praying for those who do not know God, and good news, praying for those who one day will be like me, a religious sister, or like the fathers, a priest, because you don't know how many of your prayers have helped us to be able to listen to the voice of God and respond to the vocation that God is giving us. So don't you dare thinking that you do nothing for God because you might not stand up like I am here shaking before you, talking to you, or doing some other missionary works out there. You do have a mission, the mission of intercession, the mission of praying for consolation and reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and also the mission of praying for the vocations, vocation to the priesthood, vocation to the religious life. So the angel prepared them, the children, with the prayers of reparation. That was the first one. Then later, on the second apparition, the angel told them, and here, the second apparition right here. He said to them, pray, pray very much. Offer prayers and sacrifices constantly to the Most High. Make everything you can as sacrifice and offer it to God as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and supplication for the conversion of sinners. So the angel of Fatima came to the children to tell them that the mission that they had was to pray for those who are in sin, who are not yet met God as they had. So, then Our Lady promised that after confession, after praying the rosary, meditating, going to the Eucharist and receiving the Eucharist with devotion, with love, and it's not only going to Mass, brothers and sisters, we need to go back to adoration. We need to go back to be with the Lord. We need to go back to go to our churches. There's many churches that have perpetual adoration or adoration from nine to five or nine to six. Or even if the Lord is not exposed, he is in the tabernacle. So let us go and accompany him in the tabernacle and pray, pray with him. Let us go to the church. Let us get out of our houses and go back to the churches to pray to be with the Lord. So Our Lady said, and gave the promise to those who practice this devotion of the first five Saturdays of, of the month, I promise to assist them at the hour of death with the graces necessary for salvation. This is very important. This is not superstition. This is not a game that I give you, you give me, or a, a trade, you know. I give you something, you give me something. It is not automatically. We need to work for our salvation. We tremble and fear, as St. Paul says. It doesn't happen automatically. What Our Lady is saying is that she will be there at the moment of our death, and she will assist us with the graces necessary for salvation. She's not saying that you do this and you're saved. No, ladies and gentlemen, we need to work. We need to, we need to, uh, to do what God is asking us to do in order to achieve salvation. It's not like I pray the rosary, I go to confession, I, t I receive Holy Communion, and that's it. No. Yes, we have to do all those things because Our Lady asked of us that, 
But we need to do as well our part of protecting our souls, protecting our minds, growing in holiness, growing in virtue, having a classical Christian life that has been forgotten in many parts of the world and in many people. They think that they by just praying a bit and that's it. No, we have, as St. Benedict said, ora et labora. We need to pray, but we need to work for our salvation. And we need to know that we have the promise that our, our, the hour of our death, Our Lady will be there, and she will be make sure that those graces that we need are going to be there for our salvation. We have to live in a spirit of reparation. All the acts of devotion offered should be done with the intention of repairing the offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Let me tell you something. Our Blessed Mother is very much offended up to this day. And we need to do reparation. And we need to do our prayers, but also offer it in reparation. The angel of Arima taught the children another prayer of reparation, and, and it is this. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. And I, I ask you forgiveness for those who not, do not believe, do not adore, and do not love you. So, you see, everything we do, we have to think, Lord, I am doing it for those who are not doing it. I am praying for those who do not pray. I am loving for those who do not love. I am serving you for those who do not serve you. And that's the spirit of reparation that we install in our lives. So we don't have to be thinking, what do I do to, to, to do reparation? Nothing. Just make a decision today. From today on, everything that happens to me, everything that I do, will be offered to you, Blessed Mother, in reparation for all the sufferings that you are bearing still, for all the blasphemies and indifference and ingratitude and the indifference towards our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and to the life of salvation that he has given us. So we have a big responsibility as Christians to be men and women of prayer and reparation. And I I began saying that from the very beginning of the church, Saturdays are dedicated to a Blessed Mother and consecrated to her, and it was praised by the Pope in this case, St. Pius X. Lucia, after she heard Our Lady, as any of us, she questioned herself, you know, what is this? How how am I gonna do it? What is it what I have to do? And one day during her prayer time, she asked our Lord, and our Lord revealed to Lucia why Our Lady was asking five first Saturdays. And he said to Lucia, my daughter, the reason is simple. It concerns to five forms of offenses and blasphemies against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And this is why. He said, first five Saturdays, okay? The first Saturday, we need to repair for those who are against her immaculate conception. How many people sin against the immaculate conception of our Blessed Mother? So the first Saturday is to repair against those who are, it is for those who are against the immaculate conception. The second, for those who are against her vir- perpetual virginity. How many people do not believe that Our Lady is perpetually virgin? And they fight, and they tell you, no, they ha- she had more, more, more children. Why do they say that? Because in the Bible it says, hey, your bro- the brothers and uh, your sisters are there. And that meant 
their cousins because the language was not developed that much. So brothers and sisters were cousins of Jesus. It was the only son of Mary was Jesus Christ. And she gave birth to Jesus and she became, she was before, during, and after birth a virgin. She's perpetually virgin. So the first Saturday is for those who are against the Immaculate Conception, the second one, for those who are against her perpetual virginity. The third Saturday are in reparation for those who are against the divine maternity, refusing at the same time to receive Mary as mother of all humanity. Maybe in our circle, these things are not common. You know, we all know our Blessed Mother is at the Immaculate Conception. We know that our Blessed Mother is, per, is perpetually virgin. We know by dogma of faith that uh, divine maternity of Mary. But out there, which is the majority, because if we were majority, we couldn't fit here in Knock. I mean, Knock and then the other town and the other town and the other town should be filled of people if the people would really believe in God and Our Lady. But we know that we are the great minority in the world will live. We have the great mi minority. So, but this is not about numbers because there were 12 and they changed the world because they did what God wanted them to do. So we can be not that many, but we can change the world if we do what God is asking us to do. So the fourth Saturday is for those who are, to repair for those who are against the Materni the, the maternity. The fourth one is re in reparation for those who are against publicly instill and induce indifference, hate, scorn towards our Immaculate Mother in the children's hearts. Im imagine those who install in the children's hearts hatred to our mother, our blessed mother. So we need to do reparation for that. And not only that, we do reparation, we need to do something to teach our children to love our blessed mother. Last night we had, were having dinner and I was having dinner with a grandma and the grandma was telling me how much she spent time teaching her grandchild to pray the rosary. And as soon as the parents gave the girl or the boy a cellular phone, there goes the rosary, no more rosary. Not only rosary, not even blessing herself or her, himself before going to bed. Not even wanting to go to mass because the media and the world is taking our children. So we need to pray for them and we need to do something to teach them about the devotion to our Blessed Mother. So it is something that it was said in 1917 but now we're living it in real life. I tell you, there's many people who are installing in the heart of the children hatred or not having devotion to our Blessed Mother. And the, and the fifth first Saturday is in reparation for those who insult or directly offend the sacred images. How many people, even Catholics, don't want to place an image of our Blessed Mother in their homes or a crucifix in their homes because they say that it's not a church. They put all these other decorations, but they don't, they don't have an image of our Blessed Mother. They don't have a crucifix in their homes. Or when their children live with them and they're 18, 19, and they say, Mom, Dad, your, your house looks like a church. Why don't you just take off the crucifix from here or take away that, that uh, statue from here and give it to your friend? That is a rejection to the sacred. And we need to pay attention to that. We need to bring back into our, our homes, into our, into our lives, into our families, the statues, the crucifix, the Bible, the praying of the rosary, and if they cannot hold the whole rosary, at least a decade of the rosary, but let us pray together something. So this is why uh, 
the Lord continues saying to Sister Lucia, my daughter, that before they offended and insulted in my heart, my mercy was moved to request this small reparation in recognition to her in order to grant forgiveness to souls who go through this disgrace of offending my mother. But you, at least, try unceasingly with your prayers and sacrifices to move my mercy for these souls. It is important, brothers and sisters, to establish a fixed time for this devotion. And in this case, the first Saturdays of the month. This will help us to establish a habit. So some people say, oh my God, if I start doing this and I forget the second first Saturday that I am doing it, the five first Saturdays, what am I going to do? It's very simple. You just do it the first of the five Saturdays that you're going to do, like today. If, you, if you're willing to begin today, it will be great because today is June. Then we have July, August, September, and October. We even finish with Fatima because the 13th of October is the last apparition of Fatima. So we can do it within the time of the apparition of Fatima, which was the, pl the time in which this petition was given. So if today you open yourselves and you say, Lord, Blessed Mother, today I offer you this day for our Blessed Mother in reparation to her Immaculate Heart so as to repair for the blasphemies and ingratitude towards her and to accompany her through this day at all times, during my prayer time, during my lunch, during my conversations, while I walk, while I go to Mass, and I offer everything in reparation, anything that happens to me, everything that comes my way, I offer it up to Our Lady, and then I will offer it the next five, four first Saturdays. That's it. You don't have to be thinking next Saturday you're gonna, it's a next second Saturday. You just do it. And I have good news. One day you're gonna do it every Saturday, the five Saturdays. Which, what do I mean? That you don't have to do it only five Saturdays. It just becomes a habit for you. That on the first Saturday, your life, your prayers, your sacrifices, and everything you do will be offered to Our Lady for, to repair and to console her heart. Now, remember, we are not the whole universe represented here. We are just a big group of people, even if we're 10,000 out there. That's not the universe, that's not the whole world. The majority of the world is giving their back to God, and that is why the, it, we are the way we are. We need at least you as Jesus said to Lucia, at least you console your mother. At least you do reparation to your blessed mother. At least you offer yourself to pray for those who do not pray, to love for those who do not love, to receive Holy Communion for those who do not receive Holy Communion, to go to confession for those who do not go to confession. And let me tell you something. Don't you think that whatever you do is small? No. I started speaking of from one little rock that each one of us bring, we will create a mountain. So one little prayer that each of us give, we will recreate a new world by the grace of God. And as I finish, I want to invite you to go to the first Saturday stand devotion, which is right to my lip, right there. And they have this little booklet that will help you to fulfill the petition of our Blessed Mother of praying the five first Saturdays of the month. So today you will receive plenary indulgence, something that I forgot to mention that is important. The plenary indulgence is received by confessing, receiving Holy Communion, praying for the Holy Father. 
it is plenary. Today is a plenary indulgence because we're all going to pray together the Holy Rosary, and it is first Saturday. And that plenary indulgence, you can do two things with it. One, you can apply it to your own self. And it happens what I told you at the very beginning. You are clean as of the day of your baptism. All the remissions of your sins are going to be gone. The forgiveness of sin is forgiven at the sacrament. But the remission of the, of the punishments for sin are given for, for a gift of the church by a plenary indulgence. So you can receive it for yourself. You, not, you cannot give it to another living person because that living person has the capacity to suffer still and make reparation and penance here in the world or after death in purgatory. But you can also offer it for a soul in purgatory. And that soul today can go to heaven. Every time you receive a plenary indulgence and you offer it for a soul in purgatory, that soul is released and goes to heaven immediately. My suggestion is that you are generous and give it to them. We don't know how many years are those souls in purgatory. We don't know who is going to be. We will meet them in heaven when we get there. And I'm sure that when they get to heaven, they'll remember you and they'll intercede for you. And you'll have another person interceding for you in heaven because you just sent them to heaven by offering that indulgence for them. Because while we live, we have enough time to suffer a bit and to give to the Lord our love through prayer, through sacrifice, but above all, through love. May the Lord bless you and let us offer this day to Our Lady.